Let me see if this sounds familiar. You wake up, brush the cobwebs off, you brush your teeth, maybe you hop in the shower, grab some coffee. You get dressed and quickly, just like that, you're out the door. Caught up in the same routine that is daily life and rarely do you realize it. I mean, what else are you supposed to do? You have a life full of tests and quizzes, homework and practices, families and relationships. A life full of responsibilities makes time your greatest commodity, and by next year, you may even have less of it. Often, you feel busier by the second, and at some point during these distractions, we may lose ourselves within these halls and find ourselves lonelier than ever. Almost just feeling like a rat in a maze, lost in the shuffle of students getting to their next class. God calls on us to ask us why and to offer us a solution, a spiritual exercise to step back from it all, to find yourself in the madness and to just say, We are called to live in acceptance of God's love, to be aware that it surrounds us. This isn't the easiest thing to do. In fact, we as humans fail constantly to see God in our lives. We have a flawed response to this mysterious perfectness that is God, and we reflected on this flawed response in week one. It is a struggle to keep a positive and faithful mindset, but it is not impossible. Daily life can get hectic, so we must remember to feel the flow of time and be present with God in the moment he created for us. As we accept that we are sinners and undeserving of God's love, we open ourselves up to more love from God, ourselves, and others. We must not get wrapped up in false comforts and insecurities, but only seek and subscribe to the truth. And that truth is always God's unconditional love for you. There is no greater representation of this love than Jesus Christ. Jesus' mission, as we studied in week two, was to be a healer, to be in complete service of others. In order to live meaningful lives, we must be ready to receive Jesus' healing as well as reflect it onto the world. Being a beacon of light for others trapped in darkness is the greatest service you could provide. In our modern lives, this can take place in the form of a conversation, a kind action for someone, a simple compliment, even just saying hello. The smallest thing can bring someone back to reality, make them recognize that their life is happy, that everything is okay, and that God has a plan. We go out of our way to show others we care, just like Jesus did. Jesus demonstrated the highest, most pure form of love, which is sacrifice. He made the ultimate sacrifice and we learn from his passion in week three that we are loved and redeemed. It is up to us to let each other know of this love. We have so many responsibilities and places to be that it causes so much stress and warps our mind to the point where we forget why we are doing something in the first place. These things, while they may seem important, really aren't. In the grand scheme of the universe, we are simply creatures, creatures with the creator, we must be able to slow everything down and remember that fact. And when we remember that we are children of God, all of our stresses should just melt away. Knowing that God will take care of everything allows us to be free and be ourselves, to be as we were when we were children. Knowing from our reflections in the fourth week that through Jesus' resurrection, we are free of all sin, burden, and stress, that they are pinned up on the cross with Him. We must be able to find laughter and joy in God's plan for us. There are no accidents. As Coach Heidemann says, when man plans, God laughs. Some days are bad and some days are good. But in this crashing and falling of waves of life, we must be able to shine and smile and seek out how God is at work.